A сега како што најавивме на самиот почеток на овој дневник, го имитуваме интервјуто на големиот пријател на Македонија и поранешен германски амбасадор во нашава земја, Ханс Лотар Штепан. I have tried to find out the background of the situation today and whether the uh, neighboring states have a right on the Macedonian name from the Greek side, on the Macedonian language from the Bulgarian side, and on the Macedonian territory. And I found out that there is no legitimate right for Greece, of course, as you know, yes. so it's nothing new for you. But uh, it is important to convince them that they do not have any right. It is more important to convince the European Commission, NATO, Mr. Schaeffer, who thinks that it is enough to be member in NATO and, and then to say the others uh, are wrong. Only because they are not members, they are regarded as wrong. What is this kind of negotiation? So, uh, to find out the truth in history was maybe not easy. It took time, it costs time and money and nerves and, and, and work, but it was feasible. But to convince the opponents of the real background, that is the question. And that is the task of politicians. I am uh, from I'm, I'm a born uh, pessimist, but one must not lose uh, his conviction that justice may prevail. Uh, a peace without. <laughs> I read this recently. Peace without justice is unbearable, does not exist. It's not peace. Yeah, it is not peace. So how can the neighbors mm. believe that there will be peace on the Balkans if they realize their unjustified goals? If they were justified, okay. Even if it is to the uh, negative uh, consequence for Macedonia. Mm. But it is not. They are not are correct. At all. Yeah, they are not right. Yeah. If they had the right on their side, yeah. sorry for Macedonia, yeah. but they have not. So it is a matter to uh, convince them, or especially the United Nations and uh, European Commission. That's why I think that the uh, campaign of Prime Minister Gorevsky is very correct, and in time, before one has tried to do it on another way, but now it was time to bring uh, things on the level of pub international public. Yeah, yeah. And to, to oblige, to oblige mm -hmm. Prime Minister Karamanlis to reply. Yes, how and what, what do on, on the answer? How could he permit himself to be, pretend that there is no minor, Macedonian minority in Greece. That is impossible. That is a scandal. The, they they, they exist. They exist. And you know, the problem is that everybody in the European Commission and in the administration of the United Nations, they know that this minority exists. But they don't oblige Greece to accept that. And if this is the case, that even such international organizations that represent our values of truth <laughs> and right, if they accept that Greece is gambling with them and with you, or with you and with them, then there must be bigger interests behind. I wonder what are those? I think, according to my results, these are the interests of the former members of the Entente Cordial mm -hmm. from 1904, mm -hmm. France and Britain, mm -hmm. 
And in 1907, another country joined was Russia. Today, Russia is generous, I think. They, they have made so many losses. What uh, concerns um, Macedonia is for them not very interesting. Uh, I think they should help you. Uh, they are strong enough to help you, but to get some help from Britain and France will be very difficult. If they will be ready to uh, explain why they supported Serbia, Greece, and, and um, uh, Montenegro mm -hmm. and Bulgaria in 1912-13 to swallow Trakia, Epirus, and Macedonia, then there will be progress. Because this is history. This is fact. Yes, nobody can live and exist without history. And uh, as soon as this question is solved, or is accepted at first by the international organizations themselves, they must stop the principal who has the power is right. That's not correct. No. So the double standard policy is what is so dangerous for Macedonia. I think Macedonia would survive, even without membership. You know, do you remember what happened to Serbia? The Serbians one day said, OK, if they don't want us, we stay away. What did they do? They started to, to ask them, well, why don't you come? We should negotiate. And they made offers. And in spite of not having Karadzic Kar yet, and they don't have Nadic yet, they do as if they want to integrate. Because the servant said, no, no, if you don't like, then we don't like either. So you will, you will exist even without membership. But if you give in and renounce on your name and tell the Bulgarians, yes, you are Bulgarians, although this is an anachronism, the Bulgarians came later than you to the Balkans. They were assimilated by the Slavs. They accepted the Slav language. They speak your language, not yes. you theirs. Yes. It is only called Bulgarian because they, they managed somehow to call their country still Bulgar Bul Bulgaria and the, the, the language Bulgarian. And now they think they can pretend that uh, Macedonian is Bulgarian. It's, it's anachronism. It's a, it's a game. They try to realize what they had for dreams of. Velika Bulgaria, you know, Velika Megala, Megali Grecia, and, and Megali Serbia, and Megali Germania, I know, I know, all the same. Megali Britannia, still today, Megali Britannia. Great Britain. Nobody cares. In, in, in my little town where I, no, in Bonn, where we go very often into an Italian restaurant. Grand Italia. Crazy. But that's the case. Everybody wants to be great. If possible, super. And we have paid for that. Let the others pay too. They should renounce on becoming and wanting to be great. They should be satisfied with that, what they have. Instead of blaming and nagging other people and, and try to steal their uh, rights. Their, they would steal your identity. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and you shouldn't give in.